Okay. Um, I guess since I'm on my um, big security kick, um, and I'll just mention briefly that security is both both entails um, the ability to preserve your data along with the integrity of the system. But today I'm going to um, discuss some tools that deal with the integrity of the system or other systems that are on your computer that may not be in Linux and how to use Linux to um, to check on the integrity of say your Windows system. And so uh, the thing I'm going to be focusing on is um, a product called Antivir that is produced by, I think it's Avira.com, if I'm right, or uh, Avira, uh, or wait, let's see if I can get the name of the company here. It is owned by Avira GmbH. It's a it's a, okay, and I'm talking about the pers the free personal edition. There's a Windows version, but I'm sp specifically talking about a Linux version. Uh, yesterday I talked about botnets and the system that's used to, to compromise Windows station uh, workstations when they surf the net. They end up selecting a uh, at times they'll do a search at Google. At times they'll end up uh, finding a result that looks legitimate, clicking on it, and end up um, finding out that it doesn't go providing any kind of information of um, of usefulness, and they may even you may end up uh, having a uh, a fake virus scanner window pop up and tell you you're infected with various viruses and and offer you to um, give you the golden opportunity to have your credit card stolen if you enter it in and then from then on you're part of a botnet and your your data is collected and et cetera et cetera et cetera and botnets are uh, being studied very heavily by the by the security community of the world over and um, anywhere from 92 to 98 percent of the computers are in botnets or, or are on Windows desks and um, the danger is, is the point I was making yesterday. The danger is, is that you could end up thinking you've gotten rid of a virus and you really have it, and that's when they really have achieved their social engineering process. Um, part of the social engineering process process is um, for you to be fooled by the <laughs> by the the fake search result that comes up. The next part of the process uh, of social engineering is that maybe someone might actually believe that they have some kind of free virus scanner on their computer and pay for it and think it's a good thing. It's not. Uh, the next thing is, is that there are tools out there like malware bytes, um, hijack this, and and uh, you know regular antivirus products like Norton or. Um, McAfee and even firewall products that that run that you, you know you think that these things are protecting you or you know it, even if this antivirus thing pops up and you already have your virus program because they are designed to circumvent the way the virus engine is built and even the latest updates there's a there's literally a race between the virus software vendors to update their virus engines and these people that make these <laughs> malware programs basically um, if they could you know they, they tr these people that it's a it's always catch up for the virus vendors they have to figure out okay what do they do different this time so they can catch up in the meantime if you get affected your antivirus is really rendered um, inconsequential and, and this solution I'm talking about is not a Nopic solution uh, one of the reasons to have Linux on your um, on your hard disk in a separate partition is that you can uh, boot into that and you know, theoretically, <laughs> yeah. You know, hopefully, hopefully this won't be too widespread. Or the, the the virus writers will probably do try to do something about this. But for the most part, since majority of people don't have their discs discs partitioned, 
you'll have the advantage and you'll be able to boot into Linux uh, into the other hard drive. The Windows won't be able to see this other hard drive or access it at all. Boot into there and run an antivirus full antivirus program um, a virus, they also have a Windows version of Vira, they're using the same um, virus signatures, then you can check your system to see if it's free, is indeed maybe your own antivirus program that's in Windows uh, may not have uh, detected when it happened and became um, compromised along with your system. So in a way I'm saying that um, virus scanners are much less uh, useful than they used to be. And uh, you know, having a, a, a firewall program in Windows is part of the solution, but also um, e even the reason why you know when you got people started to get Vista or Windows, it would ask you, do you want to run this program? The reason why Microsoft did that is because there's a lot of things that are going on in the background that people just don't want to, people just never see. And um, <laughs> but on the other hand, the backlash about it was that. Um, you know, that people were being asked questions about running their own programs, and people thought that was just stupid and annoying, so <laughs> there was a backlash about it, but that's the reason why Microsoft did what they did. Now, um, so I'm going to discuss today uh, setting up the, um, the antivirus program called the Antivir, or, a or AV Scan. The name has changed a few times, but it's basically the same company that uh, has a close association with SUSE Linux. I'm also going to see if I can go and do Ubuntu and do the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the basic strategy. Hopefully I won't go over my 15 minutes and I'll move on to the next video. But the basic strategy is is that if you think you're compromised, you may have been compromised. And I, and I say that the, the, the trigger for thinking you might be compromised is if you do some kind of two things. Uh, you open up a spam email, any spam email, <laughs> or you do a Google search and you find that your results are pretty much nonsensical, or you're asked to download Codex to see a video, or an antivirus uh, current year pops up right now, and I'm doing this video on September 25th, 2010, just for your reference. This is OpenSUSE 11.3 and the kernel version, if I remember... Might as well just type you name minus R. And just so you know how to find out what your kernel is from now on. Uh, it's 2.6.34. Desktop version, but I don't think that, that makes much of a difference. I mean, all these things are going to matter, um, believe it or not, at least, at least in Linux. In Linux, uh, you're going to have to see some of the more and understand some of the more low down things. Uh, to use it, to use the scanner most effectively, but probably just having um, just the scan on demand activated is probably good enough for your purposes if you're not using Linux day to day. If you're always using Linux day to day, you know there's a remote chance that if you haven't updated your computer that you can get rooted, or, or maybe someone knows about a vulnerability that hasn't been released yet, and the people. <laughs> and the developers haven't even patched it, and you, you can get rooted. So, you know, th this this um, this software may be one tool to use amongst others to be able to um, find out if you um, you've been compromised or not. I'm also going to talk about um, the basic strategy hackers use. to break into Linux systems. I'm writing that down so I remember, but um, let me see, let me check my home directory and see how big this file is, find out where I am as far as time time is concerned. Let's see, view, view mode, details, I found that it's about, okay, so it's not that capture, it's the one right, let's see, the date, yeah, okay, so I'm at about 10 minutes right now. Okay, so the basic strategy that um, that people that um, want to break into Linux systems, and there's a lot of Linux systems out there, it's really a numbers game in a matter of time, really. Um, 
and it's really a matter of whether the administrators are able to keep on top of things. And as with human nature, people make mistakes, time lapses, uh, things don't get updated in time, and that, at the end result, just as a matter of math, some of these Linux desks are going to get compromised. So what they usually do is they'll send some uh, network traffic. They'll just start scanning IP numbers with uh, a program. Uh, and, that, and the program will return values to them. They'll just go over IP ranges. You know, there, there are known ranges of IP numbers that exist out in the real world, and so they'll just decide they're going to start checking the 172 block today. Let's check that. And they're, and they're sending out the same kind of signal, machine by machine, node by node. Each, like our, in our company, we have a, uh, a router that has a, a a, a, an internet address that's considered a part of the internet, and on the other side of that router, we have um, you know our local area network set up. And so, what they're going to probably get in in our in our situation, these scans aren't really much of a of, of a risk to us we, um, because they're going to scan our router and they're going to see our router as some kind of sys. You know, they're going to first have to hack into that router and get around it. Okay. And then after they, even if they hack around the router, they have to hack around a firewall. And then after they hack around the firewall, they have to get to one of these stations. And they're going to have to be able to deal with NAT. They're going to have to guess what our IP configuration is. And I don't think, I'm not certain about this. Maybe, maybe not. I'll have to check some of the, the black hat presentations to see if scans from outside the internet can penetrate all the way down to the workstation level. Um, earlier, I, I wasn't under the impression that they were able to, but um, you never know. So um, I'll do some looking into that and maybe update this. But for now, I'm just going to assume that it's possible. Okay? And so if you you have a workstation and you're using Linux all the time, let's assume that they're able to, to somehow send some network traffic. They're able to push it into the system. It's not um, being pulled down by the fact that your computer sends a signal out and the signal out responds back. It's, it's a push, not a pull. Um, in, the, the traffic's initiated by an outside and they're able to get a what's called a fingerprint of the operating system you're using. And based upon that fingerprint, oh, there's a Linux machine. You know, the program, whatever program they're using knows, okay, that's Linux. Okay, so let's send some, let's try to, then they have a list of different Vulnerabilities that are that are known for for Linux, and so they try to send network traffic to exploit those vulnerabilities. And uh, if one of those vulnerabilities works, they gain root access, and then what they do is they log in uh, using a, uh, one of the open terminals, and then they download their root kit and they replace some of the binaries that are resident on your system with theirs. Um, they may even make changes to the kernel. You know, you don't know at this point if you've ever been rooted. You know, again, it's probably the best thing to do is just to format your disk, reinstall. You know, get any valuable data off there, and, and don't assume that any data you had on there was uh, saved. Okay. Um, and this may be more prevalent. There may be some people who are deciding to use Linux on the outside and put Windows in a virtual environment. Um, and the more common a virtual environment that you have, uh, the more likely it, it is they're going to know what to do. They're probably going to shoot for the lowest common denominator. So if the most common um, uh, emulation shell they use, it's kind of like Box that I went over on the other thing, is, is say hypervisor out there, then they're going to go. F they're going to try to. S they're going to do tests to see if hypervisors there. But they're not going to stick around too long because there's so many other ripe machines just ready to be harvested and rooted and used to their devices. This has been going on for years. It's nothing new. Um, so the idea is to keep yourself uh, up to date. And don't let your security patches fall behind. So I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to go into the details of setting up the virus in Linux.